Okay, sorry, I blipped out there for a second, um, but I'm still here. Um, I don't know what's happening with my internet connection. I hope it stays. Okay, we are having internet difficulties today. I hope we aren't plagued by them, but um, today is an exciting day because the temperature is actually going to be above freezing. Yay! I'm so excited. Yesterday, I think we got to like just above freezing and today we're going a little bit higher. So I don't know. It's just so nice. Last week, we froze here like the wind chill was like some negative quantity that I can't even like fathom so I can't even put it into to numerical terms but um it was so cold um my husband and I we went out for a walk to the post office and first of all the, we got so much snow that it was like kind of the the walk that we had to like the sidewalk and the road that we walk on uh it was so narrow that we had to walk single file and the wind was howling and it was awful i'm like uh i don't think we're gonna go for another walk until it warms up um but fortunately we have a treadmill so so that's uh great and i'm able to walk on it but i am driving to the post office if it's like a wind chill in the minus 20 whatever region i'm like i'm sorry i'm gonna drive next time um but i did manage to try to get out anyway i'm blabbing um i'm just so happy like the sun is shining i'm gonna close the curtain in a second but I'm just like basking in the sun over here because you know i haven't seen the sun and the heat of the sun for a little while so it's so so nice um uh Oh, Lisa says I'm dedicated to to my walks. Yes, I I am a very avid walker. Uh, I I am so avid about my walking that I rarely miss a day. Like I mean, I can be sick and I will still get on the treadmill. I'll just like lower the walking speed um, because I know if I don't walk, I'll feel even worse. It's it's one of those things that um, if you know if you know me, I will find a place to walk no matter what. And if I'm sick, I'll probably still walk. I might not walk as much, but I I still walk. Anyway, today is Casing Tuesday, and it's the day where we take a card of the catalog and copy it. It's a specific card that we pick, and you can join in with us by joining our Facebook group. The link will be in the description of this video, so all you have to do is click on that and ask to join, and one of us will approve you. And then you can see the card that we're copying for the week, and um, you can join and you can post your card on our Facebook group. We love to see um, people posting their cards. And last week we had a whole bunch of new people posting cards. So yay, thank you for doing that. I love to see them. So um, let's jump in and I'll show you the card that we're casing this week. It is a card out of the Celebration Catalog. So let me do a little flip around and um, let me just, if you, um, let me first click this little button. Okay, there's my view this morning. It is like snowy. That's the Charles River, um, and it's it's actually quite beautiful out there. If it weren't so cold, if snow would be just like let's just pretend that's like a white beach or something, that would be cool. Let me close this curtain a bit. All right, that's a little better. Now we don't have the sun doing weird things on my. Um, work surface. Okay, so this is the card that we're casing. This one right here with the lemon lime twist. It's got this long, skinny uh, focal point, which is great for certain images. You know, we all need this type of card to get our long, skinny images on. So what I did was I took another celebration stamp set. This is the Lots of Lavender stamp set, and I stamped this card with it. And I love this uh, uh, lucky, not lucky limelight, lemon lime twist and the black because it really makes this focal point pop. So I'm going to show you how I made that. This is the stamp set I use and this is a stamp set that can only be earned with a purchase of $50 um, because it's a freebie if you purchase $50. Then um, I'm also using the Thoughtful Banner stamp set. And if you don't want to do your card that says Missing You, um, you can do it 
in whatever combination of words that you want. You could do happy birthday, you could do happy Mother's Day, you know, just there's a whole bunch of different combinations of words that you could use, and I'll show you how I did that. Um, but I thought, you know, I need a missing you card. I thought that was, I always do thank you cards, I do birthday cards, but I don't ever do missing you cards, and, and I, I thought that would be kind of a fun card to do. So, how did I do it? Let's start off with, we have to do one thing, we have to, um, emboss this lower um, portion. So let me do that first. Um, you know, I didn't even write out my measurements, so I'm gonna have to measure this as I go along. This piece is a four and a quarter inches by two and a half inches. And if you wanna look up my measurements that I use for this card, uh, just click on the description of my video and um, I have a link back to my blog post that has all of those. So to emboss this, we're going to use a new embossing folder. I believe it's called the Simple Stripes Embossing Folder. It's this one. It's in the Occasions Catalog. Um, and I'm going to use my regular platform minus the thin die adapter. We don't need that because we're doing embossing, not cutting. And you need two cutting plates. You need your embossing folder. So I'm going to just... I like to center this and I want to make sure that it's not crooked because visually I think that would not be good. So just make sure it's straight. You need to make sure it's straight on your platform too because this die, not die, a folder um, is the width of the big shot. So if it's crooked, it's not going to fit in there very well. So just make sure it fits and then run it through. Okay, and so here's the piece. And I like this folder because stripes is a really nice neutral pattern that looks really nice on cards. So that is an embossing folder I would definitely recommend. Oh, and I'm gonna show you how to do some cool things with it um, coming up, uh, not, not today, um, but um, this folder has more versatility than you think. All right, so. Let me grab the card base, and I kind of did a tent fold, so this is 11 inches by four and a quarter, and I scored it at five and a half inches. Then I took this piece. Um, this is from, gosh darn it, today I've got like, all my paper is like, what's the name of that paper? Just hold on, okay, whoa, it is over here. I was so organized, I had everything out last night, but I forgot to write down the names of the paper. This is the um, Petal Passion Designer Series paper. If you're not familiar with this, it's in the Occasions Catalog, and it's a study in the black and white paper, which is a great paper because it's neutral, so you can put it with anything. So, um, and you can color it too, like you could color these polka dots if you wanted to. Um, so this piece I cut to four and a quarter inches by three and a half inches. Actually, I don't think I needed the three and a half inches. I only needed, let's see, I think I put down that I needed, I only need three inches, but if you have a little bit more, it makes it, um, when I cut it, I had, this was my leftover piece. So if it's a little bit longer, it's just gonna tuck under. So it's just gonna use a little bit longer of a piece. All right, now my adhesive is gone. Just excuse me for a second. Wow, I didn't think I'd have one of those days where I'd have to race across the room to get stuff. So let me just put a little bit of Tombow. You want to go really light with this because it is paper and you don't want it to pucker up. So you want to do a real light hand on there. Make sure it's straight. Goes right up to the top. And smooth that down. And then I'm going to do Tombow on the back of this as well and put it down at the bottom 
The nice thing about using a white card base is that it's white on the inside and you don't need to put an extra panel in there or anything um, if you're going to write something in there later on. So, hmm. little crooked right there. Okay, so now I just need to work on my focal points. So let me set that aside. Here is my focal point that I'm using and this one is two and a quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. And I'm going to be using this big lavender stamp and the Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad. Let me just ink that up. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I want to stamp this centered on my piece of cardstock. Like that. And if you have any questions while I'm stamping, just please feel free to jump in and ask. Um, then we're going to stamp. This is going to be what colors the flower portion. Um, and I'm going to use the Berry Burst Ink Pad. This is one of our new in colors um, that, that got introduced last year. And um, I, I'm using it especially because... <clears throat> I'm also, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice. Um, I'm using it because it was in the same group of ink colors as the Lemon Lime Twist. And I think those two play off really nicely on each other. I could have also done Wisteria Wonder, which would be more a true color um, if you wanted to create the look of lavender. But I thought this is kind of a, a pretty alternative to just a true um, purple. Um, so let me just center. I'm hovering this over. It's not going to match exactly. So if you're a perfectionist like me, you're going to probably go, mm, it's not perfect. But it's supposed to have a watercolor look. It's not supposed to be perfect. So you'll notice that there's some like white uh, spaces. There's some spaces that looks like it colored outside the lines. That is how this one stamps. And <clears throat> if you can get over that, you'll realize it is very pretty. Um, so that's all we need very burst for. Then I'm grabbing my Lemon Lime Twist ink pad. It's in the same color group. So then we just need to stamp these two leaves. Um, so this one goes over here. And you're just going to hover it, make sure it looks pretty centered. Stamp it down. And then we're going to do this one over here, stamp it down. Then we're going to do these stems down here on the bottom. So, oh, I got it the wrong way. It's nice. Everything on this piece has uh, something so we can color it in. So then just line that up on the bottom. Now we're left with the bow. And normally I would do this bow in a different color, but because I'm going to stick a real bow on top of it, I didn't want to mess up the color. So what do I do with this bow right here? Well, if I stamp it in Lemon Lime Twist, these pieces of the bow that come down are going to look like stems. Um, and I'm going to actually cover up the top of the bow with my real bow. So that's why I'm going to stamp this bow in Lemon Lime Twist because I'm going to make it look like stems rather than a bow. So I do that and then the bow kind of looks more like a, a stem or leaf matter. And then when I come in with this little bow that I tied and oh, I love this. Um, this is... Um, organza ribbon that's in the occasional in the occasions catalog and it is so pretty and it ties nicely the nice thing about using white ribbon is that you can put it on every single card you know you don't have to worry about matching things up the other nice thing about this ribbon is you can use our um, Stampin blends and you can color them um, and you can make like a, 
um, it will actually stay on there better than our, our markers because they're alcohol markers. So you can color this ribbon as well. I'm going to leave mine white because I want I, I don't want a, the bow to detract away from this image because I want people to look at this and, and look at that and not just the bow. So I'm going to take um, a mini glue dot. Okay, here's the next one on the roll. And I just like to stick the knot right onto the mini glue dot. And then I peel it off. And then I'm going to stick it right on the knot right there. And you can kind of see how my uh, bow that was underneath that was stamped underneath has now disappeared so that's how I did that so we can glue this to the front of the car and I'm just going to pop it kind of between the stripes I know I'm a little bit of a perfectionist so I just I'm kind of lining this up with my my stripes so that it's kind of centered between two of the stripes below there. Okay, and now we just need to add our greeting. And I'm gonna stick with the missing you. So I've just got a scrap piece of black cardstock. I've got my missing and you on two different blocks. So this greeting actually comes together like this and I cut right down the center. I cut them apart and you know I like to do this and you can put those greetings back together if you ever want to stamp them side by side you can but I need a little bit of extra black space on either side of my missing and my you and that's why I'm going to stamp them separately and it's going to be easier since I've cut them apart. So I'm going to emboss on the black white embossing powder on black cardstock. Hello, Catherine and Christine and Renee. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm using my embossing buddy, and I like to do this because this, um, rubbing this over the cardstock will um, make the cardstock uh, repellent to those um, stray flecks of embossing powder, um, so they'll not stick in other areas. So you wanna rub that with the embossing buddy first. Then you're going to take a Versamark, and I'm going to ink up my little greeting, and I'm gonna stamp it right along the bottom like that, and then I'm going to do the same thing to my U. I'm going to stamp it right near the top. I know I have a really big piece of cardstock, but I found that this is going to be easier than cutting a little tiny piece of cardstock and trying to stamp on it. I'll, I'll cut it out of the cardstock. I'm just using the edge of the cardstock kind of as a guide to stamp straight. Then I've dumped my white embossing powder into this little container. I find it easier to work like that. Um, I'm going to use, I've got a little baby spoon left over from when my son was a baby. And I just use that as my little scoopy spoon. Sprinkle some white embossing powder over top and give it a top off. And if it didn't hit certain areas well, make sure you go back and um, do it again. Make sure that it, it has good coverage. Okay. And then I can set this aside. And then I just need to bring in my heat tool. I'm going to make noise. So this is my heat tool, and I'm going to turn it up on high. So I'm going to... Um, push it all the way in and then <clears throat> I just wait a few seconds for it to heat up and then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start doing small little circles over top of my word and as I do that it's going to start to change colors from kind of like a, a light white to a darker a darker white. You can, you'll see it better if you're doing it in person, but you just want to make sure all of that embossing powder has melted on there, because if it doesn't melt onto the cardstock, it won't stay on there long term. So now what I did is I just 
took this and I cut, maybe I'll cut down below first because I was a little bit far away from the edge. So I'm just going to cut along both sides of the missing and then I'm going to come in and cut maybe an eighth of an inch away from the missing. See, that's just the little word right there. And then I can do the same for the U. Just come in and cut it out. I find this is so much easier than trying to stamp on a little tiny scrap of cardstock. Let me just even that out on that side. Here's my little tiny U. Okay. And then I'm just going to use some Tombow to add these two little guys to my project, like that. And like that. Maybe I'll move it up just a bit. There. So that is the card. Not super hard. I love that this Lots of Lavender stamp set has this fill image so that I don't have to sit there and color it at all. I could really do the flowers in any color because this is a very neutral um, lemon lime twist will be my green and this petal passion paper has a lot of different black and white patterns so really you could create this card in a lot of um, different ways do that in different colors um, then your thoughtful banners um, stamp set it's a really great basic stamp set to have because you're going to be able to create a lot of different greetings with it and you know you could stamp them um, just on, on regular cardstock, you could have done this um, a, a different way too without the embossing, but it's very impactful to have this embossing like this. It really stands out. And I basically, I copied that out of the, from this card right here. If you're using the pandas, and the pandas are super cute too, um, there's a happy birthday in the stamp set, so you could use happy birthday or the love you in the stamp set and create this card as well. Um, Panda Party is also a celebration stamp set, so this one also is one of those ones that you can earn free with a $50 order. So that is my card for today. I'm going to flip me around again just to hold on. my chair got pushed back let me sit down and pop this okay I, I saw Christine posted a question she said scrock of card is that an American word I don't know what did I say um, is, did I say scrock of card um, I don't know I <clears throat> Christine, you may need to retype that and let me know what you, you meant by that. I don't know what I said that sounded like that. Um, scrap of cardstock. Did I say scrap of cardstock? Um, yeah, I will. I think we use the word scrap of cardstock, don't we? Um, just like a little little piece of cardstock. So yeah, that's probably um, an... Uh, an American um, word that we use. Um, um, maybe I should just throw in some British words like um, maybe I should get my hair cut in a in a fringe instead of bangs and stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, it's neat when we have all these different words to to say the same same thing. Um, I should um, we should have. Uh, uh, British guests come to stamp with me so we can um, talk some different, throw some different words in there. Uh, I said scrock. Did I say scrock? You know, the funny thing is when you're doing these videos <clears throat> is that you your brain thinks you're saying a word the way 
it's supposed to be sad but when you go back and you play it like you I could I could actually um, uh, think that I said the word and I'll go back and I'll play it and I'm like what the heck did I say it's like you can't even believe the words that you have said on the video you think you've said scissors and you've said uh, ruler you know it's it's the weirdest thing you go back and you couldn't you can swear up and down that you said this word and it's not what's on your video so it often makes me wonder you know when you have like you think you have this photographic memory you know you have uh, an argument with someone you they said well you said this and I'm like well, no, I didn't. And the truth is, if it was actually videotaped, maybe we would have actually said something different than we thought we said. So it just gives me pause sometimes when I go back through my videos and, I, and I'm and i editing them. And I don't edit my Facebook Live videos, but I, I do edit my other videos. And I, I think, like, wow, these are words that came out of my mouth and I thought I was saying one thing and I, I said a totally different thing. Um, but if any of you who do videos, um, you probably know what I mean because, you know, you could be the most organized person. You can have everything placed out there and you still forget something. It's, it's just incredible, um, you know, how much brain power and setup that even like a Facebook live <laughs> um, needs to have to to come out um, correctly so I'm sorry if sometimes I say weird things um, but I hope you will bear with me <laughs> okay let me see if there are any other questions um, oh lots of thank you everyone who came today and watched me live I'm when I tip my head like this I'm I have reading glasses built into my glasses and I'm blind as a bat without it so I'm not putting my nose up at you or anything it's just um it's just the only way I can read my little screen um ah uh, yes people are very happy about the sunshine I am happy about the sunshine um thank you Renee for coming back I'm I'm glad um that you came back after missing a few weeks. Um, uh, oh, lots of places people are posting from, yay. Um, yeah, Sylvia said Stampin' Up! does not sell black embossing powder. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think we don't sell black right now, which is really, really odd. We really should sell black. We have copper, I think we have gold and silver but we do not have black right now so you know um you for myself that just causes me to be more creative sometimes you know you have to work with in the parameters it's it's kind of like my limited supply challenge i only use current stampin up products in the things that i create so it causes me to be very creative sometimes and in that creativity I learn how to do things in a different way and um, so I love that actually I love it that I don't have every single tool known to man because I'm probably a mim mimicking what a lot of my customers have they don't have um, a craft room that is like fully stocked with every tool iman imaginable so I and, and I probably have more than some of my customers do but um, I'm also you know have limited supplies I will only use current stuff in when I'm stamping so that's kind of fun so yeah, but you know what, um, the way things cycle, we'll probably see black embossing powder sometime again. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if there are any other questions. Uh, Catherine says you might get rain today. Oh, I know rain rain is is not fun but a foot of snow is also not so fun so you know what I would actually take some rain if it will melt some of the snow because right now our streets so when it when it snows a lot in in our area we have narrow streets to begin with and um, people shovel their snow right um, but as the snow kind of um, melts a little bit it kind of starts to spread into the street 
And we have these streets now that, you know, in, in our neighborhood, just in, in our little stretch of the neighborhood, you can't quite put two cars across. So, you know, one person has to kind of wait over, you know, in a bigger spot so the other car can pass by. And I find that really, really annoying. So I cannot wait for the snow to melt. You know, a little bit of snow is okay, but we, we have a lot of snow, like not as much snow as we had three years ago uh, when we moved here. But if we get another foot of snow, it's going to start to be like what we had um, that epic snowfall three years ago. And that just really wasn't any fun for me at all. And so I, I, I'm not a big fan of snow anymore. I'm getting old if I can't even have fun with the snow, right? Okay, let me see if there's any more questions. Some things popped up. Oh, someone says they love the lavender stamp set. And, and it's, it's beautiful. Um... What am I doing? It's like the colored glitter paper coming back. Yes, yes, that glimmer paper coming back is awesome. Catherine says she's had 96 days of no precipitation. You need to come to Boston and visit me. You'll see some precipitation. Um, okay, Renee says that you can use black ink with Versamark and clear embossing. Yeah, you could do that. Um, I think, though, doesn't that kind of muddy up your your ink pads. I have issues with with my ink pads staying relatively clean. Um, how are you getting on with the new blender pens? If By blender pens, if you mean the new Stampin' Blends, the new alcohol markers, I think they're fabulous. I think they are better than the old version that we had a few years ago. I like them better. I think the colors are truer. And, um, so yeah, I could have, st I could have colored this lavender with the Stampin' Blends, but because it had a two-step stamp, I mean, why would I sit there and, and blend when I have this beautiful watercolor stamp that can just stamp on top of it? But I really do like the, the new Stampin' Blends, and I can't wait. I, I'm hoping that in the new annual catalog, we'll get even more colors. I would like to see them in all our Stampin' Up! colors. I think they're great. Um, and so far so good. Um, my, my, I've had them now since I think October and I haven't had to replace any of them. So I'm, I'm happy with their longevity as well. Um, let me see. All right. So stamp for smart first and then into the black. Yeah. I guess, but wouldn't that muddy, muddy up your black ink pad? I'm such a purist, Renee. I'm like, I have trouble mixing my, my ink pads. Um, but like, I, I would worry about the Versamark getting on my black ink pad then, right? So I, I know some people do that. I'm just like, oh, I know. I, I, have, I have issues, long standing issues. You know, don't even talk to me about um, my, my glitter phobia. So we, we won't even go there today. Anyway, I've blabbed way, way, way too long today, but thank you so much for, for joining me. Um, if you want it, show me your card that you've cased out of the catalog, make sure you jump in on the Casing Tuesday Facebook group. If there's something um, that you want to double check a measurement on my card, just go ahead and go uh, stamp, like link over to my blog and have a look at that. And I have all the measurements and all the supplies that I use today. Um, celebration is a great time of year to purchase Stampin' Up! products because you get a free product for every $50 purchase. So um, lots of lavender is just one of the stamp sets that you can earn. Um, so, um, you know, have a look at the catalog. Um, a lot of the products that I used to make the card today, they, some of them would add up to $50 so you could earn that product for free. So it's a really, really good deal. Anyway, um, I hope you guys all have a great week and I hope it's all in the plus temperature for everyone unless you are one of those people that love snow, then I hope it stays cold for you. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping that it will melt a little bit. I'm sorry for those winter loving people out there. I'm sorry that I want it to be warm, but I just do. All right, guys, have a great week. And I will be back next week for another Casing Tuesday Facebook Live. All right, take care. Bye-bye for now.